Ladies and gentlemen, we are group 12 with our presentation on failure theory and site six loading. The members of the group are Shonak Verma, which is myself, and Andres Gonzalez, who you will see in the latter half of the presentation. Problem statement given. The problem statement given to us was to investigate failure theories in site six loading. Our motivation and goal for this project was to gain a deeper understanding about cyclic loading and see how a structure can fail without getting pushed to its ultimate strength. So what is fatigue failure? Machine members are found to have failed under the action of repeated or fluctuating stresses, yet the most careful analysis reveals that the actual ma maximum stresses were well below the ultimate strength of the material and quite frequently even below the yield strength. The most distinguishing characteristic of these failures is that the stresses have been repeated a very large number of times. Hence, the failure is called fatigue failure. Well, when machine parts fail statically, they usually develop a very large deflection. Thus, many static failures give a visible warning in advance, but a fatigue failure gives no warning. It is sudden and total, and hence dangerous. There are three stages of fatigue failure. Stage one, which is crack initiation. Stage two, crack propagation. And stage three, which is fast fracture. Stage one is the initiation of one or more micro cracks due to cyclic plastic deformation. They are not discernible to the naked eye. Stage two is the development from micro cracks to macro cracks accompanied by the formation of parallel fracture surfaces and longitudinal ridges. These ridges are called clamshell lines. As you can see, we can see these parallel ridges and these are our clamshell lines. Stage three occurs during the final stress cycle and results in fast sudden fracture. So these were the three stages. Uh, this is how we distributed our topics for the entire project. Um, next slide. And now it is Andres Gonzalez for the rest of the presentation. So there are three methods. Uh, which uh, we'll, be dis we'll be discussing in this video uh, for cycling loading and fatigue failure. We have the uh, strain slide method, then we have the strain life method, and uh, at the end we have the linear elastic failure method. So we're gonna talk about the strain slide method, which is the most uh, used. Um, it is an um, experimental method developed by August Wooler who it's called the grandfather of fatigue. Um, he performed a rotating bending test on various alloys, and this method is still uh, one of the most uh, used to estimate the fatigue life of a piece. So what Wooler uh, did, he recorded his data doing this uh, experimental test, and then he plugged this into, into this diagram. So he plotted the nominal stress versus the number of uh, cycles uh, for the uh, piece to fail. And this is called the SN diagram. So uh, like we said, the stress life method is mostly used for high cycle fatigue where the stresses applied are elastic and plastic strain does not take uh, place in any location other than the, uh, at the tips of the fracture cracks. So, from the three methods that we have, uh, this is the, the least accurate, but on the other hand, it is the most used. So, so there are uh, various machines used for the testing of this theory, but the most used is the R Moore rotating beam machine, uh, which uh, consists of um, a design based on the rotating beam principle. The specimen works as a simple beam uh, with a symmetrical, with a symmetrical uh, lobe 
um, at two points. And the purpose is to make the stresses in the fibers uh, originally below the ne neutral axis to be reversed from tension to compression and vice versa. And after one half revolution, and upon the completion of this, the stresses are reversed once again in order to, to make the, the test specimen pass through a complete phase of tension and compression. So now we have the strain uh, life method. So the stress, the stress life approach applies to situations uh, that basically encompass elastic deformation and by this condition the structure is suspected to have a long lifetime. So what would be the correct approach for situations that relate high stresses or, or elevated temperatures or stress concentrations such as notches? where um, substantial plasticity can be involved. So the, the strain life will be the best method to resolve and give, give uh, estimates with these uh, conditions. So plastic strain occur, uh, the stress located on the local discontinuities such as cracks, uh, notches, and other areas where the stress is uh, concentrated. And, and, and it sees the, the elastic limit. So rather than the stress amplitude um, to represent uh, the behavior, this, the loading is uh, characterized by plastic amplitude. So notice how in, how in this graph um, we can uh, see the um, elastic uh, part and the, and the plastic um, part that uh, Takes, uh, that take place and into, into the, the fatigue. And these two uh, get some, and we have the total amplitude um, uh, fatigue theory. So, even though this is a, a very a complete equation uh, to estimate the fatigue life based on the strain and cyclic characteristic, it is not often used by designers. Uh, besides uh, this, uh, the method is not helpful to the, determine the total strain at the bottom of discontinuities. And also, uh, there is no uh, much uh, data recorded uh, for the concentration factors, so maybe in the near future. Uh, we will we'll have this. And now we have the, the linear elastic fracture method, uh, also known as LEFM. So in the years of World War II, uh, an American researcher uh, called George Irwin developed uh, the tension in the fracture of steel armor. So during his uh, research and experimental work, he came up with an equation uh, for fracture uh, do, that remains um, as one of the most used methods of these days. Uh, so Ewin was able to, to show arithmetically that, stress, that the stress field in an area surrounded by an, in, an infinitely sharp crack bit. So, in, we can see the equation. In this equation, uh, basically, he, by proving this, he had uh, the initial fracture, uh, or initial crack, I'm sorry, final crack. Uh, he has the, the estimated number of cycles um, for failure. And he just relates this with the geometry of the piece and, and the const experimental constants as um, C and M. Uh, so fractures mechanics have been used heavily in the aerospace, nuclear, and in ship industries uh, with a recent extension to the ground vehicle industry.
So what is the best theory for cyclic, cyclic loading? So uh, stress life methods are very uh, useful at high cycle fatigue, only when no plastic strain is expected to occur. Uh, once again, this is the most used and accepted method, but not the most accurate. On the other hand, we have the strain life method. Um, we can be used for low cycle uh, fatigue, where uh, elastic deformation is taken into account. This method is uh, very complete, but it is also very com complex and uh, very complicated with uh, the calculations, so engineers do not often use this, this method. And on, on the contrast, uh, in contrast with these two methods, we have the LEFM, uh, which is a method that, that has Become, has become one of the most relevant and it is mostly used in the plane industry with, where uh, fatigue conduces a very important concern for safety. Group 12, thanks you for your participation in this presentation. Good day.